Republicans put mental health at the top of the list, followed by violent video games, racism and white nationalism, Democrats in Congress and loose gun laws. Well, Randy Blazak joins us now from Portland, Oregon. He is the chairman of the Oregon Coalition Against Hate Crime and a sociologist of extremism. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, of course. Well, as the United States grieves, many are asking what is happening in this country. And many world leaders just can't comprehend why politicians in this country seem paralyzed and unable to come up with any solutions in the form of uh, gun control. What is happening in the United States right now? Well, that's a, certainly a big question. I mean, one of the issues is the laws regulating and guiding uh, what can be done about domestic terrorism are dramatically different than what can be done around international terrorism. And so there is much uh, uh, that can be uh, investigated and policed uh, under international conspiracies that really has to be left alone when it's domestic because of our First Amendment protections of free speech. So there is a, there's an opportunity there to revisit these laws around domestic terrorism. I think finally uh, the nation is ready to have that conversation. There are also all these other issues, including not just the gun issue, but the bullet issue. The fact that, you know, America really has a bullet problem, that we have these weapons that have high count magazines that can fire off dozens of rounds that essentially make them automatic weapons that are easily available at gun shows and over the internet. And so that's one of the loopholes that really has to be looked at closing right. down, the stockpiling of weapons. I mean, there are all these little bits and pieces that get at it, but of course there are the underlying issues that are much harder to tackle with a law or with a campaign promise. And so that's so, some of the more work that we have to do on a cultural level around why these things keep happening in this country. But what's confounding here is that uh, some 90% of Americans want to see background checks in place. They want to see gun controls. They want to see assault-style weapons, weapons of war banned. So if there's so many Americans that want to see that happen, why are politicians paralyzed and unable to make that happen? What is the barrier to that? Explain that yeah, to us. There's, there's two words to that, the gun lobby. The gun lobby has sort of insinuated itself in our national political landscape in terms of the money that it, it generates for campaigns and how it props up special interest groups around these issues. And it's just been increasingly hard to have even the most reasonable gun laws make it through state legislatures or our national Congress because of the, just the incredible stranglehold that the NRA and the gun lobby has on politicians. And so this is where it takes leadership. This is where it takes courageous leaders to say, I don't need that money. Uh, I don't need that influence on my political position. Uh, and it, you know, we're starting to see it from some of the candidates that are running it for 2020. Uh, but it has to, you know, filter down to the local levels, not only on the national political uh, level, but running in the state houses, running for local uh, community leaders. It's really just this incredible amount of money that's poured into the battle against sensible gun legislation. It's incredibly frustrating for those of us that have been studying it for years and years and years because it, we've been screaming about, you know, what are some simple solutions that we could use to not eliminate this. We're not going to eliminate it completely, but we certainly could reduce the amount of carnage with some of these more sensible gun laws. Um, so right. it's so in it's, essence, you're saying these politicians stuck. are being bought off by the, the gun lobby. Well, you can put it that way. I mean, you know, it takes a lot of money to run a re-election campaign, and so money talks, and, um, you know, But, but it's, it's, still, it's still hard to sort of gather, because if you've got the majority of Americans wanting gun control, it doesn't make sense. I can't, I can't take any sense from any of that, because if you've got most Americans wanting all of this, and you've got these politicians accepting money from the, the gun lobby, that doesn't make sense. Right. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't to a normal thinking person. But when it comes down to particular issues, you know, it could be a particular issue regulating uh, a sale of a particular weapon or background checks. Or all of a sudden, all this money pours in, uh, and the advertising campaigns can be very persuasive, and the rhetoric about, you know, your your guns being taken away, your Second Amendment rights being taken away, and it becomes very powerful in that moment. In general, Americans want sensible gun legislation when it comes to so for specific issues uh, that are being decided, it's very easy to sway enough people to prevent these things from happening. 
Well, let's see if something is done this time. We thought with Sandy Hook it was a turning point. It wasn't. Uh, we thought uh, with many other shootings there were going to be turning points. And now we have uh, these uh, two mass shootings. We'll see what happens. Um, Randy Blazak, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it.